Buonasera, Monster Citizen. Let me say, first of all, that uh, it seems you are lucky. You live in a beautiful city with a lot of uh, green spaces inside and outside. So it um, must be a privilege to become an adult uh, here. And this is not exactly what happened to me because I was born and grown in Milano. And because of its industrial uh, heavy past, uh, it was renowned really as one of the most polluted cities in Europe. It wasn't easy to be a child in a similar place. There was no common consciousness about the consequences of pollution, but I remember I didn't feel well. I wasn't happy. I'm certain that the experiences we have as children uh, profoundly mark our journey as adults. And I still can read some sign when, while looking inside me. When the time to decide which direction to give to my professional life came, I made an unusual choice. My classmates started the linguistic, economics, medicine studies. I resolutely turned towards nature. I started studies in agricultural field against any convenience for this period. So, what moved me? Maybe I was influenced by my childhood uh, in the country, by my grandparents, because uh, I remember having a particular feeling uh, for trees uh, since I was very, very young. I used to spend a lot of time looking, uh, looking how they changed season after season and year after year. And even if I didn't understand the consequences for the trees, I suffered from saying being them mistreated. Something happened uh, that radicalized me when I was, I was nine years old. I remember the oil crisis of 1973. The Arab petroleum uh, exporting countries proclaimed an embargo and the oil prices rose nearly 400%. Car use was strongly restricted. My city turned into a darker and darker place because the austerity turned off all the lights in the city. And it must be then that a mechanism was triggered inside me. I refuse the blackmail imposed by the oil lords and the vision of the city, of the life they are building around us. I have to go in another direction. I will return to the earth in harmony with the cycle of nature. Only then I could feel free. I fit the term biophilia perfectly, made popular by the psychoanalyst Eric Fromm in the 60s, to describe the biological drive towards self-preservation. But the full transformation of my, of my life wasn't easy because I didn't discern from landowners and agricultural experience a period of deep crisis at the time. So I remained in the city. But I didn't stop having feeling uh, with the trees. I studied them for years and taught how to have proper care to hundreds of young professionals. Meanwhile, the city around me grew and changed, but it was still perceived like a harsh place. More recently, from a workplace to a place where to live, the demand for a better quality of life increased. It is well known the cities now host 50% of the world population. Cities are responsible for the production of 75% of the CO2 in the atmosphere that is changing our climate. So, how we imagine the future of our city regions? Will they be regularly flooded by heavy rains, increasingly unhealthy? Will be beaten more and more frequently by unexpected strong winds? Will they be unbearably drier, dividing between areas with lack of drinking water and consequently reduced food? When we think of the cities of future, what kind of scenery do we imagine? The dark city described by Ridley Scott uh, movie Blade Runner, a town in which it doesn't matter if the sun is rising or not every morning, is luckily far from to, to be a reality. Currently, it seems there are two different trends when we are talking about uh, the future of the cities. Two alternative visions, the hyper-connected cities 
and the ecological one that are not necessarily mutually exclusive, but are, they are really combined in discussion on in the planning process. The smart city is an intricate network of digital communications, computations, and connection. This city is efficient, safe, responsive, resilient. It can detect and repair the possible disruption in service, inform and meet the needs of the, its citizens quickly and easily. According to this scenery, human labor is less and less requested, and computer, robots, and drones do all our unwanted jobs. So, what do people do in the hyper-connected city? Probably we'll be free from the grueling task associated with meeting our basic needs so we can do other things. Leisure, creative work, craftsmanship, or establish dynamic relationship like, like this, no? Not for now. This is the most frequent image of connectivity we have in our cities. The ecological city is again an intricate network, but of living system, interacting with one another within the built environment. Outdoor and indoor urban landscapes, buildings, roof, streetscape are all seen as opportunities for nature to provide ecosystem services like stormwater management, wastewater treatment, food production, microclimate moderations, and many other. The EcoCity protects these assets for future generations. In my vision, plants grow everywhere, softening the hardness of the urban environment. The urban forest draws carbon from the atmosphere and stores it as wood. Plantings flow through the city, supporting ecosystems that allow human residents to interact with the wildness daily. In the, light, uh, the late 70s, the American biologist uh, Edward Wilson extended the meaning of the word biophilia, seeing it as the rich natural pleasure that comes from being surrounded by living organisms. Because we, uh, in our history, we live 99.9% in relation with nature. This is our human evolution, and we can change our brain in a few decades. Essentially, biophilia is changing the way we work, live, and operate with a built environment, and can be defined as humanity's need to connect with nature and the natural environment. Researchers even quantify the beneficial effects and give them a monetary value. The performance of people working in green environments double compared to those who work in conventional ones. And in a marketplace where costs are key and mistakes cost money, this sort of increase cannot be ignored. Findings from the field of environmental psychology show that humans are aesthetically <coughs> attracted by natural contents and by particular landscape configuration. Brain, brain prefer biodiversity. These features are also found to have positive effect on human brain functioning and can reduce stress. However, opportunity to be in contact with greenery are reduced in modern urban life and generally confined to free time. So cities need to be restructured consistently with ecological process, ensuring access to any sort of greenery. Green infrastructure and other functioning and connected landscape can support biodiversity, can mitigate urban heat island, can reduce floodings. And uh, there are proof that we don't need to spend long time in contact with nature to get benefits because there are proof that five minutes are enough to register substantial changes in our mood. So, bringing nature into living space enhances people's well-being in their everyday life. Biophilic design can help in overcoming the discrepancy between ancestral and current habitats. And it is not related to few plants in a room. You need a strategic approach and integrate in all building operation and property management. 
Of course, restoration of the true natural ecosystem is not possible in urban areas, but the implementation of functional integrity and natural process is a necessary component of, of any attempts to create stable, productive human environments. Architect, researcher, scientist, engineer, they are all working together to, to build something new. Building for trees inhabited by humans, like this. If we embrace the EcoCity approach, it will, like the digital technologies, weave its fine, often invisible threads into the fabric of our daily lives at home, at work, and in the public spaces. And this everyday life creates really an expected reaction when you no longer just see concrete outside your windows. For example, the resident of the Bosco Verticale couldn't even imagine to become observer of the life born at only two meters from their house windows. They are the first witnesses who send us via WhatsApp images of incredible biodiversity created at more than 100 meters above ground. But because it's composed of living things, the city garden will experience dynamic and disturbances from chemical stress or to pests and diseases. This system requires regular attention from someone deeply familiar with it, someone able to recognize the behavior of the system that is not within normal parameters. So it seems that if the smart city reduces work, the eco city increases the needs of work creates work. And as today we maintain our homes by repairing breakages, for example, in the future we may need to take care of our personal living elements in our homes. Everyone in the ecological city has to become a gardener within, with intimate environmental knowledge. Don't think to become a flying gardener like my friend René before to be proper trained for this. I'm just saying you have to change the attitude. You have to look to this system for what they are giving us. Probably they are not offering Wi-Fi services. They are simply giving us the air we breathe. It seems that a future in which our lives are surrounded and intertwined with ecological infrastructures offer an antidote and balance to a future in which our lives are under control and probably led by digital technologies. You need physical contact with nature. You need to be immersed. The ecological cities work makes those who feel disempowered by city life in a position to reclaim their individual action. Contact with nature does, does need to be mediated by technology, just the minimum dose you need to learn more about it. We just need to learn how urban ecosystem work and to become urban gardenists, to elicit and understand their dynamics. It's important to promote self-sufficiency and resilience in ecosystem management because sustainability has be to be our driver. But the best period to plant a tree is 20 years ago, so we have to move on because we could do it almost everywhere, one tree at a time. Thanks.